and welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation for today is going to be discussing the Pandora Papers. This broke a couple of days ago and of course has made headlines across the world. If you listen to news media um, organizations from, you know, the Washington Post to the Daily to uh, the New York Times, it's one of the biggest conversations across the world because of how interesting the details are. Uh, with Pandora Papers. And of course, like I mentioned earlier, it covers, you know, it you know, exposes um, or touches rather on persons of interest from presidents to kings, political leaders, businessmen from across the world. Nigeria in particular has 10 persons of interest and uh, just a few names have been put out so far in the last couple of days. We're speaking this morning with a journalist from the Premium Times, Nicolas Ibekwe. Uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Ibekwe. <clears throat> for having me. All right, let's start with, you know, you telling us, you know, what exactly Pandora Papers is all about. Um, you, you, what's the general idea behind it? Well, um, the idea behind it is um, um, first trying to um, and broaden transparency, really. Um, a lot of the world's most powerful people and um, um, some of the world's wealthiest people you know, for instance, don't pay their fair share in, in um, uh, taxes. They have also amassed so much wealth and they are hiding them in all of this jurisdiction, this secret jurisdiction where they are beyond the reach of the authorities of the gov of, of their governments or uh, beyond the tax authority or the law enforcement authorities. Criminals who have perhaps made money from the sales of illicit drug or from kidnapping or from the mob are also hiding their money, I mean, their resources in places like that away from um, uh, people. So we, the first thing is we're trying to broaden transparency and say, this is what is it. These people are keeping these assets in all of these places. It's also what it's also um, it also does. It's also help to show the level of inequality in the in the world generally. Why some people are amassing wealth somewhere, and um, the, the amount of the poor people in the world is just getting the affair of the poor people is just getting uh, worse. So um, it's to show that there is money somewhere being kept. People have moved money and all of that. It's also help to show corruption. Um, our first story basically was on, on the former governor from. Peter Obi and how he flouted the, the uh, um, 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 laws of the country. So um, several times, the, the Guardian has done the story about how uh, the lawyer of the Queen of, 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 of the royal family of, of, um, of, of, of the UK basically helped uh, Governor Bagudu of Kebi State to move his money to um, 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 Singapore and, and stuff like that. So these are, it, I mean, that, that, that is the idea behind it. This is a... Um, the um, third itinerary of the leaks we've had, and uh, interestingly, they all start with letter P. We had the Panama Papers, now we had the um, uh, Paradise Paper, which is le the least known of all the papers because it, I mean the the document, uh, the data we got was not so big. Um, now we have the Pandora Papers. So yeah, how how um you know how much time did it take? For these, uh, I've read it, it says 11 uh, million plus uh, documents uh, that were, mm -hmm. you know, released or were put together. How long did it take, you know, to gather all this information? And is, are some of these things public knowledge that a lot of people just haven't, um, you know, looked into? Well, first thing first, I don't know how much it took the sources to gather them. We got them from 14 offshore providers. These are companies that help you. To, to set up companies in Bahamas, in PVI, that's uh, the British Virgin Islands, Island. in Singapore, and all of that. So these are the got from 14 of them, and it was given to the ICID. The ICID is the um, International Consortium for Investigative Journalists. So it's not like Professor now that are its members, and this is what, this is what we have. So um, yeah, it's 11.9 million files. I mean, one, so don't see a file as one page. You know, sometimes I remember looking at a file that is up to about 300 pages. Yeah. So, so that oh, is one okay. file. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So don't think it is just because it is seen as file because it's one at least with one thing. Some files are, are, are 65 pages long, 100 pages long. Some files are just one page. Okay. okay. So, um, it, and, and it, so that tells you the, and the, the, how huge it was. It took 600 journalists. Two years, 
to actually dig into it. It's like looking for, I mean, a, a pin in a haystack. Yeah. Where you have to dig into them, you get the document out, you have to read the document, you have to compare the document with public uh, available information like court cases. Like the one we did today, we had to do some comparison with, with, um, with court cases in Nigeria, comparison with an advert, with a property advert in the UK. And we have to start to match all of these things up and all of that. So it takes a lot of work, um, a lot of work, several meetings. All oh, the meetings were going to kill me. But um, yeah, I'm someone who doesn't like to sit at meetings. Um, so, but uh, it is what it is. Um, I think the end justified the means, really. Yeah, and I, I know that they are, you know, mostly uh, um, online meetings. I, I listened to a, a podcast on the Washington Post, I believe, you know, that played uh, some of the clips uh, from the meetings. Pretty interesting discussions, also. But um, it, it, we, yeah, but before the corona went, well, before the corona went went ballistic, we we had fiscal meetings. I mean, I had to we traveled to Benin for to Benin Republic to have. I mean, the African journalists who yes. work on the way in Benin Republic to use to. I mean, discuss this as well. Okay. Now, I, I want to also ask about, uh, before we go into the details here and there of what has been leaked for Nigeria, um, I want to ask, are these necessarily crimes or they're just, you know, information that has been exposed here and there? W would you call them criminal activity outrightly? Okay, let me make something clear, first and first. Opening an offshore account, opening an offshore company, it's not criminal in most places. In most companies, in most countries, it, that's not criminal to have an offshore. I mean, some of the big, biggest corporations in the world, they use it to, they, they call it tax management to manage their tax so that they don't get to pay as much tax as, they, it is not fair, it is not fair, it may not be morally okay, but it is not illegal, you know? So there's a difference between that. So uh, 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 tax avoidance and tax evasion you know, when you, I mean, that's different between the, the two. One is legal, one is not illegal. You know, so when you, I mean, and all of that. So people use it to, ma to manage their tax, their payment of taxes. But what we have done, some of the stories we have done, is that we have shown that uh, why this may not be an illegal activity, some people have, in the, in the course of opening this, um, offshore companies, they've broken the public service. Take the, um, um, the case of OB, for, for instance. The law of the country says you must declare your assets when you're a public uh, officer. OB did not do that. You know, OB did not do that. I had the assets there. The law of the country says you must not operate a foreign bank account. OB has a foreign bank account, you know, and he did not, he did not close the account while he was, um, um, a, while he was a governor. You know, um, so this is him breaking those laws. We didn't say Obi stole money because a lot of people are conflicting this and saying, "Oh, it's, it's money laundering." No, in the case of Obi, it wasn't uh, it wasn't money laundering. It's just that he broke some specific laws of the country, and we by opening up those accounts and not revealing them to the Nigerian authorities. That is one thing. He also had, went as far as admitting that he did. I mean, he said he, he did not know that he had to. Um, um, declare those assets, you know. So that is that about that. Now, with the case of Bagudu, the governor of Kebbi State, you know, he is a known Abacha uh, money launderer. He has been laundering money for the Abacha, for the Sunny Abacha, the former dictator, Sunny Abacha, since the, I mean, early 90s, he's been laundering money. You know, Abacha died in 1998. So he has been moving that money from one jurisdiction uh, to the other. So what he did now, but last year, the U.S. government got interested in those money that he has kept in some offshore uh, places. So for him, he was trying to move the money from the original offshore uh, um, jurisdiction to somewhere he thinks that the U.S. does not have uh, powers to 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 seize the money. So the money was uh, some of the money were in BVI somewhere in uh, Jersey, the island of Jersey. The island of Jersey is, is just a tiny piece of land. Uh, it's a sovereign country, but. They, I mean, the U.S. have so much authority and so much influence over them that if the U.S. say, "Hey, release this money," they don't, they won't have a pro they won't they won't have a choice but to give it uh, to give it to the U.S. So he moved the money to Singapore, where he thinks that the U.S. does not have that kind of um, power or something to to grab hold of the money. So these are some of the things that we are looking at. I mean, the one we published today is about the governor for sure who also broke the law. By opening up this company, these companies are not declaring them. But not not only that, he used the company that he, he owned that he opened offshore to buy a property 
that the Nigerian government has secured a freeze order on already, a property they secure a freeze order on from a Kola uh, Aluko. Uh, Kola Aluko is is um, um, was accused one of the those who were Kola Aluko and Gideon of Mokori were one of those who were accused of helping design the former oil minister to um, uh, um, to launder um, money stolen from the NNPC and from the, and, and from the Nigerian government. So why the Nigerian government has secured a freeze order on that property? They were able to sell that property for cheap and he bought it. And Tinubu, um, who we know, I mean, um, I mean, Anuku, I mean, we know that Oye, I mean, uh, Oye Tola is a, re is a relative of Tinubu, is his cousin. Uh, apart from that, uh, Oye Tola is also in a well known um, um, surrogate of Tinubu. So Tinubu is staying um, in the property. I mean, um, from all intent and purposes, uh, we don't have proof for that. But um, you can argue that um, perhaps the, the property is um, is um, is um, owned by Tinubu, but we, we, we did not say that. But because Oyitola uh, is um, Tinubu's relative, so this is how it can become illegal. So the fact of opening that company in itself is not illegal, but you can because of the secrecy that that provides, you can use that company to I mean to um, indulge in some illegal activities. That, that, that is why it is very, 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 very important that these things are exposed. All right. Is, is there... Now, let's go in detail about some of these cases. Now, is there a possibility that the... Um, because I, I read through this morning, so not entirely, but it says also that President Muhammad Buhari, um, you know, had met with um, Bolamet Tinubu in, those, in that same um, uh, building, that same um, house. Um, so yeah. is there a possibility that these persons are not aware of the... You know, of where the... Uh, house came from or how you know that house came into existence um and does this also mean or sh expose somehow some way that some of the property that the current uh, government in nigeria is seizing and of course the courts are you know asking to be forfeited to the government are you know somehow some way sold back to government cronies and government um uh, friends of the government well, um, first and first, I, I don't work for the government. I, I don't know if they are aware, but it was a government. It was the federal government. If you look at the court case that, that secured the freeze order, it was the federal government of Nigeria that actually applied and they identified that property. You know, they identified the property and applied that they wanted to seize it. They must have done some homework before they got that property and they had the address of that property and they said they were going to seize it. You know, it, it was not me. So Abuari, as the head of the government, should know. If he doesn't know, his attorney general or people around him should have briefed him. So he had no business going there. So that is not an excuse that I am not aware. How are you not, how are you not aware of a property your government had secured the freeze order on? <coughs> I'm sorry. Let's go so that, that is not um, our own problem, okay? So, I mean, so it's like we have to assume that they are aware. Have, I mean, of, of the property. Now, to the second part of your question, um, um, that um, all these properties that government, for instance, look at this property in, in question. The government has secured the freeze order on the property. So the government should, should take possession of the property. And today, but somebody else is buying it, a, a, top, a top politician is living in it. So it shows you the whole, like we say, anyhowness, you know, of the way government run is affair. And they are not able to keep track of some of these things. You know, it's a shame. It's really a shame that money that were stolen from, from the public treasury are basically and seized have been in a, in, a, in a roundabout way taken over by some other politicians again, because that, that is what it is, really. Is, is this also, you know, sh uh, shedding more light on, you know, now that you, you've mentioned the Ziani uh, Madweke, um, I remember that the EFCC chairman had mentioned that, they, you know, there was jury, what, millions of dollars that was also seized by the government. You know, should this also then raise red flags as to whether those things are still in government possession or maybe have been sold, um, you know, to interested um, uh, persons? Well, if the, government, if the government secure a complete freeze order on such properties, jewelries and what have you, uh, the government will sell them. That is, the, that is the right thing to do. You don't keep them in a the, in the museum, you know, for people to go and see. You, you want the money. You want to convert them into money because the person who bought those things really stole money to buy them, okay? So the government... But the problem here is that the selling of those things are not transparent. 
We don't we know we don't know when those we had government seize this house in Abuja, seize that house in Lagos, in Portacourt. That's all we hear in the news. And after that, we never knew who bought those property. It's not transparent. Some people somewhere who are close to the EFCC or close to the government go by ideally it should be made an auction. People should bid for such property and buy them over. You know, it should be it should be publicly um, I mean done. But we don't see that being done, and it's because of the secrecy around it creates room for manipulation and abuse of, of, of those processes. And yeah, and that is what yeah, this is a, a classic example of yeah. what what could go wrong yeah. when government are not open with with these things. All right, ap apologies for stay, staying too long on this particular one. I'm still going to read through it. But is it um, also possible that the Pandora Papers will go further and know where the source of the money that was used to purchase? Uh, this property in particular, uh, what the source of that for, uh, money is, um, uh, basically? Well, well, the Pandora paper, we are not magicians, you know. We only have records of you set up a company and all of that. Most of those things, most of those companies, they don't tell even the people who set up the, the company for, for, for them how they got the money. Sometimes they don't act and they say, oh, we got it from business, and that is enough for the people who set up the, com the company. We didn't have as, uh, access to their account details. You know, we only have the document from the company registrar. Like, I'm going to the CAC to get your, yeah. your company details. The CAC does not keep record of your account. You know, you, that is with your bank. So, this document leak was gotten from the company registrar, not from the assets managers or the financial managers of those companies. So, we don't have that. Until when we are able to get the, their bank record, then we can say, oh, this money came from there, this money came from there. But, but until then, uh, we can only do what we can do, what we have at our disposal. All right, great. Now, let's move away from Buiga um, Yatola and, of course, uh, the current uh, President Mohamed Bouhari and, and um, Deziani. Let's move to Peter Obi now. We're going to go to Bagudul finally, I guess. But let's go to the Peter Obi story and talk a little bit, a bit about it. I've seen other people who put out their own statements and their own analysis of the Premium Times um, um, expose and you know try to analyze it better and say that he hasn't necessarily broken any laws uh, with regards declaring you know bank accounts in other countries and declaring to the Code of Conduct Bureau. Um, you know, have you also read some of all those um, you know uh, uh, tweets and statements? Yeah, I've seen a couple of them. Mm -hmm. And um, what I say is very simple. The first thing first is um, the laws were clear. We pointed out the laws that he, he, he probably had broken, you know. So that is a legal argument. I mean, you have also seen people who are arguing for what we did and people who are arguing against it. If we, if we have a responsible, a responsible government, it should go in and charge him and let them go and make the argument in court. And if Peter will be think that we have represented him wrongly, he should, I mean, publish a reporter, then we will respond to him. Or he should charge us to court. Then, then we will go there and defend ourselves. But again, the, the thing again here is that Peter will be himself claim ignorance. Nobody is talking about all those analyses and all, all what have you. I'm not talking about the fact that Peter will be told premium times, oh, that he was not aware that he had to declare those properties. You know, he told us that. What, so what, what was the reason he said he, he, he didn't think he needed to declare? Well, well, he said he said because um, he, he his uh, wife and children are past owners of, of the company, and he doesn't think that um, 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 he should declare any jointly owned assets. But that is false because the Nigerian law says that you're not only declaring your assets, you're declaring your assets of your adult children and your spouse. Not just your assets, your assets of your of your own personal assets. The assets of your adult children. Your adult children are your children from 18 and above, whatever property they own must be declared as well. That's the reason for all of this. It's to prevent corruption, to prevent fraud, to aid transparency and all of that. And then people are going through the back door and even the case of the owning a foreign bank account, that was very, that is very, very clear. There's no ambiguity in that. Most people who are saying these things are Peter will be supporters and, and, and all of that. But yeah, but it's fine. People can say what they want to say. But what I told them, I told some, some of them is, we will not respond until we hear from Peter Obi. And if Peter Obi does not respond to us, he wants to go to court, find it and go to court. Mm -hmm. Then if the government thinks that they want to charge him to court um, from what we have done, then let him go and defend himself at the CCB. That's not our, that, that is the Code of Conduct rule. Yeah. That's not our, our, our Code of Conduct tribunal. It's a city. 
So that is not our own business. We have done our work as journalists. We put out the information we have out there that people can debate. And it's also good for engagement. It's good for this discussion. It's also help to strengthen our, de our democracy, which, if you ask me, is the, one of the primary uh, function of investigative journalism. So that's fine. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sure that there's also going to be political angles to some of all of this. Yeah, because I saw in the papers yesterday, I think it was the Daily Trust, uh, there were certain people that were asking that the government goes ahead to investigate um, Bagudu and Peter Obi and investigate every, you know, Pandora paper leak, basically. But, you know, yeah. what, what's your, what are your thoughts on the political angles to this and those who might try to draw political, you know, or colorations, basically, uh, to some of these um, discussions and, of course, if the government decides to go ahead and take, uh, um, uh, make these moves? Well, I'm a journalist. I'm not a politician. I have nothing to say about that. Let politicians deal with their own problem. Let me, I'm a journalist, I've done my work and it ends there. So I have, have, I have absolutely nothing to say about it because I don't have any political affiliation. I'm not doing my story because I, I support one party or the other or something. I do my story as an impartial journalist who is putting out the information that he has, uh, he has gotten out there. And um, so be it. I, I don't know about government. Let, let them handle their their own problem, I will handle mine. Yeah, I'm bringing that up because I, I saw a lot of the responses to uh, your own tweets, uh, some of the statements that you made and those who said that you dropped the ball uh, with, you know, the way that it was released. So can you quickly also respond to that? Well, I, I, again, I said this, I don't know what they want me to do. I don't know what they want, what they mean by drop the ball. I did my research, I put my information out there. They are writing with they are writing with joiners and all that. It's democracy. It's good. Let them let the discussion continue. You know, some are saying, oh, the way you present it with glee. What do you mean with glee? I mean these are politicians. I, I don't owe any politician any sober attitude before I put up my, my story. I don't owe anybody any question. I'm not a political member, I'm not a I'm not a politician. I'm not a member of um, a government aid or, or some political appointee. I shouldn't be sober when I I've done I've done a job for two years, serious work day and night working, and you don't expect me to be to put out some 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 tone of congratulatory self congratulatory tone for for seeing my work come out there. Hell no! I mean I, I just put it there. If anybody's not happy about it, then they can decide to go in their house and become sober and wear sad clothes and mourn. But I'm not going to mourn for writing a story that, and, and that's it, really. Okay, now let's talk um, uh, the Kebi State Governor of Agudu and uh, the different angles concerning, you know, that uh, release also. Um, of course, you know, like you mentioned, you know, he, you know, allegedly is known to be uh, one of the persons who assisted the Sanya Bacha government to launder money. Um, do you expect that this should be damaging for a person who holds such a uh, position today in government and seeing also... Well, Ordinarily it should, you know, ordinarily it should. This is a serial money launderer. He and his brother Ibrahim, they are serial money launderer. In fact, the Nigerian government was going to give them $10 million some time ago. I did that story for some crazy agreement that they signed and something. It was uh, what, quite I weird. think it was a repatriation of funds back then. Yeah, yeah, it was quite weird. They were going to, I mean, it's quite insane what they were going to do. Anyway, yeah. In any country, Bagudu should have resigned a long time ago. He shouldn't be governor at all. He shouldn't be able, even be able to contest. He was in prison for six months in, in the U.S., you know, when he was arrested. And he, he, he which he did and paid a huge amount of money before he was released, you know. So he shouldn't be governor at all. But he's governor. He, I mean, his house, of Reg, his house of Assembly should be impeaching him now. But that won't happen. The government, the Attorney General, should be piling up a case against him. But the Attorney General is from Kirby State, and we have learned that he is working towards... Um, May perhaps trying to succeed the uh, um, governor himself. So he, I don't. I'm not hopeful that anything will be done. It's sad. It's disheartening. It's it's like a wet blanket on all we have done. But uh, it is what it is. When you have a government who cannot separate itself from its political affiliation and all of that, and deal with criminal issues as criminal issues and not as political issues, then um, that is where we are um, here today. You made mention earlier about the UK government assisting a, a, part, a particular person with, uh, um, you know, they all moves to London money or to transfer their money to Singapore. Am I, am I correct? No, no, I didn't say the UK government. No, I didn't say that. I said a lawyer okay, for a lawyer. Okay. the royal family. Okay. A lawyer. Yeah. So a lawyer can, be, can work for several people. So it has nothing to do with the UK, UK government. No. Okay. It was the, the lawyer who, was, who, who moved, who helped uh, Bagudu to set up I mean, an off and that offshore company 
in um, in Singapore, and he was moving the money from his, uh, his other of the other, from the other jurisdiction to the Singapore uh, of I mean um, um, company. Uh, how, how much money are we talking about here uh, with regards to uh, Bagudu? Bagudu is is huge. It's insane. The amount, I can't give you the exact figure, but the amount that Bagudu has stolen from Abacha. Just think about the amount amount that is on. Um, that Bagudu has, um, Abacha has. I mean, Abacha is a gift that, that keeps giving. You know, we have gotten some of his money elsewhere. The Bagudu were, were a frontline money launderer. Because as, as at the time, Abacha had a bad international rep. He was a dictator, he was brutal. So he couldn't go anywhere and set up a company himself. So he tried to pick somebody who, is, who, who was relatively unknown, as, I mean, at the time, to help him set up this company and was moving the money there in the person's name. That's what we see some, some top politicians who are criminals. Even some, some gangsters do also. They use front um, to clean up their, their, their money and, and all of that, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's really, really hard to imagine, you know, the debt uh, with which this uh, travels. But now let's also talk about the Nigerian perspective, you know, mm -hmm. and how... And beside I'm sure that you followed, you know, in the last few weeks some of the conversations that we've had on persons with very questionable past um, that mm -hmm. have links with drug lords and drug dealings, have links with terrorism, have links with money laundering, um, but still somehow some way find themselves into either political office here in Nigeria or just become very popular names um, here in, in Nigeria. Um, so share your thoughts on what this really, really tells about the Nigerian mentality to wealth and the Nigerian mentality basically um, to these type of, of stories? Well, I, I mean, I, I've been a journalist since 2008. And um, this is a problem that we face as journalists every time. We, we are not happy that the government um, will do a story. I did a lot of expose. I've done several stories, you know. Iburi, before Iburi ran to the UK and was arrested and was jailed for, for 13 years and all of that, we were releasing expose on Iburi in Nigeria. And the government of the day at the time never arrested him. He was never, I mean, um, um, prosecuted. Well, he was supposed to be prosecuted in Nigeria, but he wasn't really until he left, you know. So um, this is what happened. It's disheartening what we are. That's why we need to um, have institutions that are not political connected. So like the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation should be um, independent, truly independent. Can be, should, so independent that even the president should not have powers to appoint the AGF. If you want to, I mean, the, the Office of the AGF and the Office of the Justice Minister should be separated. And the Office of the AGF should be thrown open. People should apply. Like, like, like you're applying for a job. And people should sit down and, and, um, and our, even like in the US, people actually vote to appoint state um, 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 attorneys and all of that, or deputy attorneys. We should have such a, a system in Nigeria if it's going to aid uh, um, the independence of some of this law enforcement um, 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 agency. But sadly, that is not the case here. You know, and, and I, I also want you to share your thoughts on, um, you know, what the reaction you expect, you know, would be in other climes. Um, because, like I said, I've listened to, you know, different conversations um, and podcasts, really, from, um, you know, international media organizations. Um, and I also heard someone, you know, asking the British Prime Minister certain questions with regards, you know, what, you know, you know certain places where he might also have been named. Um, what, you know, how would you compare the reaction in other climes to the reaction here in Nigeria? Um, and do you think Pandora Papers will basically make a lot of difference in other places? Well, um, if we go by what we have seen in the past, uh, Panama Papers, Progress Papers, in, we saw results, as in we saw people arrested, people resigning in other places, but not in Nigeria. You know, it's sad. But um, so I'm not, I would I, I, I would expect that people are resigning in other places, people are uh, arrested and prosecuted in other places. And I expect that to happen in Nigeria as well. We hope that um, civil um, liberty, I mean, civil uh, society organizations and NGO, we pick it from where we stopped. We are not activists. We are not going to protest the government to arrest anybody. We have done our work stops the moment we have, we, we publish our work. So uh, we have pressure groups who should take it from where we from where we stopped and um, put pressure on, on the government to act. We hope that will happen. 
But if it doesn't happen, well, there's little we can say, we can do about it. We have to move on to the next story, sadly. Uh, what more um, are we to expect um, with Pandora Papers? I, I, I see that there's 10 persons of interest in Nigeria. Um, I think we've currently done what the, the first three or the first four. Um, what more sh you know, should Nigerians be expecting in the next couple of days? Well, I, I can't divulge so much of what to come, but you should keep your fingers crossed. Uh, we are working on something uh, with a popular cl uh, clergy in, in the country. We also have some other governors who must have broken the law and all of that. We have, we have their names, um, stories that are coming out um, about them. So um, keep your fingers crossed, and as the stories are, are released, uh, you would you would um, know about them. But for now, I can't dive, I can't say more than I have just divulged. Okay, and, and it, it's it's a very very interesting um, you know revelations here and there you know, and I'm I'm, I'm personally excited to even read these things um, every day that they that they drop. Um, you know, where you know would you expect that um, you know the president Muhammadu Buhari also you know is, is there certain things that you would expect. You know, from him, you know, seeing these things drop, and of course, you know, seeing that his name has also been mentioned. Oh, well, well, I, I, I don't know. We, we sent uh, questions to his spokesperson, and um, they never got back to us with the response. So, um, yeah, let them think it, whatever they want to think about it, whatever they want to do about it. Uh, he's not that much culpable as in opening an offshore account or something. It's just that um, his team didn't do. Their due diligence before he went to visit somebody in a in a, in a property that the, the state the government has actually secured um, a, a, a freeze order on, so which is sad, but it ends there. We don't know. Maybe tomorrow we may get um, a document because we are still digging into those documents. We get a document that directly, I mean, um, um, indicts the president. Um, that would be fun to also write. Yeah. Okay. All right, Nicholas Ibeke, um Thank you very much for your time this morning. Um, I'm going to force uh, right after work today, look through today's uh, um, Premium Times Exposure on Pandora Papers and uh, see what more information I need to gather. But thanks very much for your time and for the work that you do. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. All right, stay with us here on The Breakfast. We'll take a short break. When we come back, the um, breakfast, of course, uh, we will be wrapping up this morning.